We're a couple day into a month trip exploring West Papua, one of the truly last wild places on earth. It's a place where nature is still at the top of the food chain. That's why we're here, mate. We're here to get really amongst it, aren't we? We're in our own bloody boat. Hang on, oh. we don't have the water, we drink this. Very clean. Oh. He's so friendly. I've never had them interact with me like that before. This is literally what it's all about. <laughs> the pillows are really comfy too. We're just <laughs> nosing up into this cave. Maori sea perch. Spanish mackerel. The largest land crab in the world. Yes, as Woo! That is honestly one of the biggest mud crabs I've ever seen. It's probably a good time to explain that sourcing a boat in this part of the world is near impossible. The local villagers rely on their small, basic boats to catch food and for transport. They sure didn't want to let a couple of clueless foreigners rent them. But we had hopes of a grand adventure through foreign shores, living from the land and sea, and doing it all under our own steam. The type of yarn you could tell your grandkids about one day. A couple of months of desperately sourcing a vessel resulted in the grand total of one boat. As long as she floated, we had to go for it. Actually, now I think of it, even if she didn't, we probably still would have given her a crack. Come on, come on you good things. This is now the port hand motor just went bang and, and stopped. I've turned both the motors on, checked the skeg, the prop, haven't hit anything, but it's not starting, is it? No, I'll have to check those fuel filters, man. We've decided to head back to the harbour. We're limping back on one motor. We just figure we can't start out with such a big handicap, only one motor on the first day of a month long trip. Really didn't want to be coming back in here until a month's time, but yeah, we're back a few hours later. We're getting a bit of help from the local mechanic. Uh, fingers crossed he can fix it. He's not totally sure what it is. It's a, it's a bit of a weird sound, the rattling it's making, but he reckons it might be something loose in behind the propeller. Fingers crossed that's it. That'll be a simple fix. There's a gear in here that is broken. So he's gonna pull it off that one. Yeah. Swap it over here. This guy knows his way around an outboard. So, so lucky to have these. These guys here at the harbour. Well done. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but things are looking promising. We're going to have to take a bit of a test run, put it under load, and uh, see how it holds up. They sound all right. Sounds good, mate. Yeah. Oh, so much faster than before. Yeah, that's awesome. Of course. Woo, month up. Yeah. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a pretty long day. It's all part of it, though. It's we'll see you in the morning. Hopefully second time lucky. Okay. We're about to throw ropes and get underway. That's a good sound. Phew! See you boys! <laughs> We're off! We're bringing her up to speed! Phew! Well, we've made it out a hell of a lot further than what we did yesterday and we've come across a shallow patch of reef you can probably see behind me here and the water is beautiful and clear so we've left the harbour where there's so much plastic and the water's murky and this is sort of what we're in search of this clear water hopefully full of fish as is just rigged up one of the trolling lines we're going to do a couple of laps here see if there's any fish feeding as you guys kind of know that are regular vu viewers of the channel we are once again surviving from the ocean to so relying on catching our own food fingers crossed 
there's some fish biting and we can get something here. Oh, mate, bring her up to speed. I'm locked and ready, mate. <laughs> Water's crystal clean, but there's quite a lot of seaweed in there, and fish are a lot smarter than you think. They're not going to hit that, so bugger. Nothing on the troll, but Strick's going to get his gear on, jump in the water, see if we can spear a fish, because we need to get lunch, and I'll throw a popper on and try and cast up in the shallows here. Shot of the trip was a bit of an epic fail, but I'm gonna blame it on this flopper. It's uh, it's bent and the spear just went went way up. So the promising sign there is a fair bit of fish here, enough for us to get a feed. So we're gonna go up, do one more drift, and uh, I've changed weapon. Hopefully this time we can get some to eat. Oh, anyway, that's gonna be lunch anyway, mate. Nothing wrong with that, mate. That, with a little bit of rice, is very welcome at this point in time. This is mind blowing. So, so beautiful. So many little bays and nooks and crannies and caves and beaches. Fortunately, it looks like there's a few coconuts up that way as well. So we've steamed for the last couple of hours to come to this remote set of islands and it's like anywhere you look, could be a, a postcard you'd see in an airport as the, the highlights of a destination. It's absolutely spectacular, but the issue is it's largely uncharted. So coming in here, we just have to go off site. You know, we've got no sounder to check the depth. There's a lot of fringing reef and rock. Cause it looks like there's a few mangroves and a little creek up here, which would be nice for a walk. Let's go. So the plan is, we don't have too long until that uh, boat will go high and dry. So we're going to do a quick search, see if we can camp here and see if there's any mud crabs around. I reckon we've got 30 minutes. 30, 30 minutes? minutes and we need to be back. Start the timer. Holy, look at this anemone, right at the mouth of this mangrove system. Out of, almost out of the water. That's amazing. Of course, these things here are venomous, so if any fish touch that, they, they get stung like a jellyfish would sting them and slowly get consumed. Generally, when you come into the mouth of a mangrove river, if it's a lower tide, where you can see a sand flat or a mud flat, you want to keep your eyes out for croc slides, which should be pretty obvious. I can't see that any's been here in the last tide cycle, but have a go at this. It's sort of the last of the run out tide. We'll walk up a bit and see if there's any mud crabs or I don't know, crocs sunning themselves. These big dead logs are such a good spot for the crabs. I think. I think. Oh. I'd be really interested to come here at night on a low tide as well with a big spotlight because the croc's eyes will come up bright red. But we won't be camping here because there's not much beach and for that reason there's crocs here. See, like even that there, it's only shallow but because it's dirty, a croc could just be sitting there just under the water, you'd never know about it until it was on your leg. But I'd almost put money on that there's a big mud crab under that log. This mangrove worm's so big, he's got an oyster growing off the back of him. Two for the price of one. It's a very intricately made bird nest. No one's home, no eggs, no chicks. Jeez, if the tide came up, it wouldn't be sitting far under, it's a risky spot. Anything, mate? Oh, not yet, mate. Looks very promising. Yeah, it does. Keep your eye out for crocs, eh? Yeah, it does also <laughs> look very crocky. Oh, I feel like we're a bit rushed for time here. We've got to get back out while that tide's not too low. This here is a dugong feeding track. So they just go along the bottom and suck up all this seagrass. That's a track for one of them. We're actually keeping our eyes peeled for them. So no crabs and not a great camp spot. So we've come back out. The boat is still floating, just in the nick of time. Jump back on and keep pressing, eh? Got to find somewhere else. All right, anchor's up.
there's just a fringing reef on the edge of this island here so it's my turn to jump in and get cool and see if we can find another fish But as they're just having a swim here, well, I've got the drone in the air and the backdrop behind us here is just spectacular. We've got this kind of pristine mountain range that comes on down through mangroves and then onto white sandy beaches and then coral out here. So it's just like this blending of all these amazing ecosystems in the one kind of picture frame. It's absolutely amazing. Hopefully Az can pick up some to eat here and, um, and then we've still got to go and set up camp somewhere. section there was like a nursery. I didn't pull the trigger, but amazing coral life. We're just gonna move up a little bit further and I'll jump in on another section. Fish have just turned on. There's like yellow fin jumping through bait fish here and Az has yelled out, he's got a fish. Let's go see what he's got. Looks like we're eating well tonight after all. There it is, coronation trout. Generally got to work pretty hard for these fish and this one was no exception, but yeah, has a perfect size for, for the grill tonight. Beautiful man, well done. We're just coming into another potential camp here and when we're selecting our camp, a couple of the most important things are that you've got a, a good safe anchorage and there's somewhere safe to sleep on the beach where the tide's not going to come over <laughs> when it when it comes back in another couple of meters during the night and that you know there's no crops and and also that you know there's no neighboring villages that aren't going to be angry with you staying there here doesn't look like we've really got a decent access point like it's all very rocky and reefy right on the edge of the shoreline but we'll come in closer for a, a bit better of a look Mate, sandy anchorage, which is a good sign, but let's go see how much sand we got up here. They come out of something's mouth. Something smashed it, yeah. Bait, mate. The perfect bait. That's pretty ideal, it man. Oh no, hopefully there's oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> mate, you couldn't find you couldn't find a better camp. Is that water behind here, mate? Yeah, it's the croc hole. Yeah, it is, actually. That's actually the croc hole. It's all fresh water here. Come and look. I reckon we set up camp here, and at night time when you spotlight, you can obviously the croc's eyes stand out. So we'll set up camp, spotlight to see if there is a croc in here, because they can be so well hidden, there might well just be one right in there. But other than that, I reckon this is a pretty good spot, mate. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Perfect, eh? It's just the right amount of crocs. <laughs> well, we've found the world's longest cutting board. Looks to be cut in half. It's all feeling incredibly real now that we're out here doing it. We've got the fish, we've found the camp. I'm the right mix, I reckon, of nervous and excited. All right, time to anchor up properly for the night. I'm just gonna put the wood in the sun to dry a little bit because everything's damp. There's been a lot of rain last night. Come on, come on. I've just walked into the rainforest where everything's damp, but there's some harder timber because what I've been using on the beach that's been in the sun for a few hours is, is drier. It's really, really light. Driftwood burns super quick, so I've got a very damp piece of hardwood here that I've dragged from out the back of the crock hole. We'll try and warm it up with the fire.
Yeah, so the plan is I'm just going to gut and gill the coronation and then I'm going to find a green branch or a stick and then just put it straight up the mouth to the tail, put a couple of slices on either side of the fillet and then we'll just slow cook it over the coals about a foot or two off the fire. I reckon that's the game plan. We'll do up a pot of rice. We've also very fortunately got a kilo of prawns that we did a bit of a pirate trade with some fishermen back in the harbour. So we're going to do some prawns, do up the fish. Stay tuned, it's going to be a pretty, pretty beautiful meal. I just want to make sure I've got optimal heat. Ideally, you can have your hand there for five seconds and then pull it away. We have got a few prawns to get through tonight. Of course, we've got no ice on board and no way of, of storing fish. So basically, whatever we catch or acquire, we've just got to eat them. Um, eat them sort of that day. Got a couple of onions I'm gonna chop up and some garlic as well. A water bottle? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah, found one. Oh, well done. How's this guy? So I asked as before, I was like, oh, mate, did you bring a water bottle? He's like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> uh, so to say we're slightly unprepared, I guess is an understatement. Just chopping up this garlic, we will, um, Gonna do one hell of a fry up here. Obviously got a few prawns to, to get through, get the garlic on top of them, um, and then the onion on top. I think there's a few greens in the chopping board here that I'm using. Red calm prawns, yum. Oh, get back in there. Can be as is. That's dinner. Prawns, onion and garlic. Time for a fry up. Right, it's all come together in the final hour of the day. Rice. Couple of fish on the slow cook. Stricky's done up the prawns. We're not far off a meal. A well earned meal, mind you. It certainly is, mate. It certainly is. It just keeps getting better and better. It's turned like bright orange now. This is just what it's all about, eh? This is so bloody good. Yum. It's just on sunset. You can see a local boat going past and they've done a big U-turn and they're, they're coming in to see us. We did hear that it could be a potential problem, us staying here, but we have got permission. A friend in the village uh, just sort of north of here. Yeah, they've just done like a really slow drive past two blokes in a, in a local boat. I wonder if they're hungry for some prawns. They could probably smell this feast I'm cooking, mate. It's come from the next village over. But all jokes aside, the time was going to come to tell you guys we are being as respectful as possible. So just it's a matter of explaining that to the other villagers when that time comes. Mate, dinner is served. That smells unreal. Uh, it's such a, a treat for us to have prawns while we're out camping. Obviously, we, we uh, rarely catch prawns ourselves. We generally go after crayfish and things like that, but this is one hell of a deal, this one. Did you hear that? That was thunder, man. Really, really loud thunder. It's eerily calm at the moment, and we just heard a huge, like a deep grumbling, and it wasn't an animal, it came from the sky. Starting to think it's too good to be true, but I think there's a storm, a storm coming. Hopefully, like fingers crossed, that misses us. But otherwise, it's going to be a long night, bro. <laughs> really long night. We're just going for a bit of a night walk through the jungle here, and we're hoping to get to the top of this creek. We've got torches, and we're just going to see if there are any crocodiles in this little system here. You like the snakes as well, mate. Yeah, mate. Watch your step, mate. Yeah. Hey, mate. How are you doing? Just turning into a little drain now, but these deep dark pools, I wouldn't want to be dumping in them. There's just about every sound you could possibly imagine in a rainforest. It's loud, eh? It's so loud. Mud skipper. Ooh, he doesn't want to go in there. And we're every chance it's seen a cassowary as well, mate. Yeah. Probably about 15, 15 meters away from us, there's a, there's a, there's a set of red eyes. See him? Yeah. He's probably about a meter. 
Be careful, man. It is no longer fucking big ones. How many? Yeah, two. Got him. Just keep an eye out behind us, too. Eh? Mate, that is awesome. We just feel like we're fully immersed in nature here. Three crocodiles, like straight out the back of camp here. This is incredible, mate. At times you you forget a little bit where you are, and then you come out the back of camp and there's a heap of crocs, and you're like, oh yep, that's right. We're in we're in the middle of the rainforest on an island in West Papua. We're starting to feel a bit of rain now, mate. But that lightning is ooh, that lightning is crazy. We're gonna get a big storm. I hope you can hear that, but it's just been raining for hours. <laughs> 